right, hello and welcome everyone to the third session of Avenger. Uh, I just have one sort of primer thing before we start. Uh, today's session will be a little bit different than usual. Uh, I will be uh, foregoing certain roles for a dramatic reason. Uh, that reason will hopefully become apparent as the session goes on. So not to worry, I'm not purposely forgetting mechanics. I'm deliberately forcing results on them, shall we say. Uh, but without any further foreshadowing, let's just go ahead and get started. And I believe Mr. Moose has the opening log today. Chief Engineer's official log to be reviewed by superior officers, Starfleet Command, and the Engineer and Corps. April 3rd, 2162. An interesting few days with the Avenger. The technology integration between the Tellarite, Rigelian, Andorian and Vulcan have caused some interesting strain on the ship's systems. Redundancies are failing, backups are failing to kick in, and too much power draw has caused some shortages on a few decks. With the help of the repair team and crew leads that I have, we've been making progress, but I believe it is in the best effort to proceed with backward engineering or developing our own versions of these technologies. Other than that, we also had to make sure the ship was prepped for the Orion Black site, which turned out to be a false flag. We arrived at an old, a long abandoned titanium mine. I'm sure Starfleet Command is going to be happy about hearing all that information. And to kill some time in between blowing out panels and ruptured systems, I've been working with the android we found. She's still been confined to the auxiliary computer bay. I've been making progress on repairing her shell. She's been teaching me a bit about her technology, but it's an easy 200 years ahead of anything I can understand. With her help, though, we've facilitated some repairs. And she's been helping me a bit with uh, Betty. Other than that, she has chosen a name for herself, which I'm glad to see, as this will help facilitate a new identity for herself. And she has chosen to go by the name Helix. I look forward to working with her and hopefully having a more prosperous future. She'll be bringing up her hopeful release to the rest of the ship with the captain after this report. and log. Alrighty. So, because it was requested, we are going to start today in sickbay, because the doctor has requested that everyone who uh, was injured or otherwise struck by those uh, creatures where Helix was found to report for a summary, uh, shall we say, exam. So, uh, according to my notes, that is literally everyone except for Mr. Morris. So I'll just go ahead and throw everyone's tokens on there, and uh, you guys can get started. Gentlemen, um, I've called you all down here because of, after our little trip, um, I recall that the three of us, the four, jeez, English is hard, <laughs> uh, the four of us were struck by the creatures we encountered, and I wanted to make sure that we weren't infected with something that could possibly turn us into one of those things, for safety's sake. Um, okay. Moose is just going to hop up on a bio bed. He's like, am I going to that chamber right there? He's going to point at the... Uh... A scanner. Um, that's probably our safest option there, Lieutenant. All right. So if you would. Well, give me a second. And he's going to bend over, roll up his right pant leg, and you're going to hear a click as he pulls off the bottom of his right leg and sits it down. Like, doesn't like going in there. Oh, well, of course. Okay. You know, Hop on over onto the medical bed and lay down. I was like, eh, well. Let's make this quick. I'm getting thirsty. All right. So, because you are using the bio bed, uh, you are going to uh, basically have an assist from the ship. Uh, so, Chief, you're going to be rolling me a, let's say, reason medicine. 
And the ship will be assisting you with a sensor's medicine. All right. And the difficulty here, I'm going to make a one. Okay. Uh, a virology focus would apply here, correct? Sure. All right. What's the ship rolling? Uh, the ship is rolling a sensors and medicine. Oh, boy. Complication. That's fun. Good way to start the session. I'll roll for the ship. Oh, okay. Well, I, think, I think the captain had it, but as long as I see the roll. Okay, so I'm just going to take two threat instead of the complication, unless you would prefer a complication. Mm, just in case something is wrong here, I'll, I'll let you take the threat. Okay, all right. So, uh, yeah, you, you send Moose in, you run a scan on him, the machine, like a uh, ancient MRI machine, uh, sort of whirs and beeps and otherwise makes noise, and uh, you're looking at the readout at the screen above it, and aside from the fact that Moose is missing part of his leg, uh, he seems to be fine. Okay, well, that's, uh, Lieutenant, you seem to be fine, uh, Captain Voss, Lieutenant Rollins, um, I'm sure that means you're fine as well, but I would like to run some scans on the two of you just to be safe. Certainly. Please, have the Lieutenant go first. Yes, sir. I'll, you know, help Moose out and then jump in myself. All right. So you, uh, you jump in and another reason medicine assisted by the ship sensors medicine. I'll let you do this one, Captain. Okay. Answers. Nice. Cool. Nice. So you guys have three momentum. So, uh, pretty much the same thing, minus the whole leg deal. Uh, Rollins appears to be in tip-top shape. Alrighty. Lieutenant Rollins, you seem fine as well. Uh, Captain, the best for last. How much moment are we saying that? Two? Three. One, three. 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 I'm right. keeping track. I got it. All, All right. right, so final roll here. Reason medicine, same thing for the ship. Sensors medicine, still a difficulty one. Very nice. All right, so you guys are capped on momentum. Very wise. Huzzah. Uh, so at first, you know, uh, you're scanning Voss, and you start to think either something is horribly wrong or the captain is in worse shape, but then you realize you were looking at Moose and Rollins, who are both human to my knowledge, and it takes you a moment to remember, oh, yeah, Voss is a Tellarite. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you, you mentally switch to quote-unquote Tellarite mode, and yeah, everything appears to be fine, uh, except for you are noticing that uh, his scar tissue does appear to be a little bit inflamed, but it's probably just a interaction between the tissue and the uniform. It's not like, say, uh, a microbe or anything, or at least nothing that you're detecting. Gotcha. Well, Captain, saves for it appears to be some inflamed scar tissue. You're fine as well. Uh, should I give you something for that, or do you think you'll be fine? Oh, no, I'll be fine. This is a reminder. <laughs> of course, Captain. Anything further, Doctor? Uh, come again, I was... I heard something in the other room. I'm sorry. This is any, anything further you need of me, Doctor? Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure we were all all right. So, uh, gentlemen, you're dismissed. Thank so, you. you guys start to leave. And, you know, there's still automatic doors to most of the doors on the ship, but some are manual. Sick Bay is one of the automatic ones. However, when one of you walks up to the door, it doesn't open. And moments later, maybe milliseconds after the door fails to open, uh, all of you are plunged into darkness. Uh, so the I panels, 
interior panels and all the common little panels that would be by the door, they're all dark. Everything is dark. The illumination of the whole sick bay, anything that is connected to ship's power has gone dark. Lovely. So I can't come out of here, can I? Nope. Mm. Okay. Do, Doctor, do you have any kind of scal- a powered scalpel? Um, I'm sure I do, but it appears that right now I'd have a little bit of a hard time finding it, but I'll try and find one, sir. All right. So uh, let's make this uh, insight medicine, because I think that would be trying to recall where you've left certain tools. Uh, let's do I... insight medicine difficulty three because of the darkness. Can sure. I assist some since I'm basically in the space with them? Um, I would say that you can assist captain, but the complication range will go up. It's a lot of sharp, pointy objects in here that you don't want to mm-hmm. randomly grab. So if you're cool with assisting, I will say the complication range would be a 17 to 20. Oh, boy. Mm. Are there, like, emergency medical lights? Or no, that's lights? what's that's probably what's the most concerning is not even the emergency backup light is on. Okay. Gravity's kicking in, though? Uh, no. So, actually, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought it up. Like, you guys feel yourself slightly drifting up. So, I'm actually going to increase the complication range to 16 to 20 and make it a difficulty 4. Oh, lovely. I do not have an applicable focus here, so this probably won't go well. Right. Momentum, momentum, momentum. <laughs> well, you can't because you're assisting. Uh, assisting. Well, no, I know I can't. I'm informing him Ah, well, he's already made the roll, so... Oh, yeah. suck of crap. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, and one of those is a complication, so that's fun. Oh, well, I already said I committed to the roll, so what am I rolling for? I know it's medicine. What do you uh, want, insight? You would be rolling uh, in insight medicine as well. Okay. Uh, medicine. Uh, would composure lead by example apply? Uh, sure, I'd let, I'd let either apply. And I believe that is also... Nope, that's a 12. No. Right. Okay, cool. So, you know, you're in the darkness, you're floating in midair, you're trying to find the tools, and you find something sharp and pointy, and you think, ah, I've got it. And that's when the power comes back. Everything flickers back to life. Uh, the doors open. You guys fall back to the floor. However, with that complication, Doctor... Uh, when the power comes back on and you fall, uh, you fall on what is indeed a scalpel. So oh, I would like you to take just two stress of damage, please. Two stress. Okay. I'm fine. <laughs> so you all hit the ground with a, a thump. And uh, aside from that, you know, except for the doctor impaling himself, you're perfectly okay. Moose <laughs> uh, is going to hit the... Or uh, the wall comm button and go, uh, engineering status. Uh, this is, uh, let's, let's see. Rollins, who is your engineering character? Because I keep forgetting. Uh, Anderson. All right, Anderson is reporting. And you are free to make up whatever, but I can also provide a reason if you so wish. Yeah, uh, this is... Anderson, uh, we lost some focus in the gravimetric uh, gradient. The emergency did not kick in, but uh, we kicked the unit, and it's working now. What systems are all affected? Uh, seemed to be somewhat isolated. List off the affected systems. All right, let's get some redundancies put in place. We don't want life support failing on us. Track down the bug. Let me know where you find it. Yes, sir? Yes, let's make sure that life support to the sh- to the medical bay is not an issue. Yeah, make sure the life support is not an issue across the ship. And with the permission, Captain, I'm going to go down and uh, take a look at things. Yes, please, immediately. 
So before you can start heading to engineering, uh, you get a very strange call. And I say this because last you told me, uh, Betty and Helix were in an isolated room in an isolated system. However, you do get a call on the comm panel. Uh, this is Helix trying to reach Engineer Moose. I did leave her a communication device to call out. Okay, then this is less weird. Uh, everything okay, Helix? I understand that you, quote-unquote, meet Sax, have different concepts of time, but I believe we were scheduled a meeting with the captain at 0300. And you look at the clock, it's 0301. We're on our way. Captain? I'm up at 3 a.m.? Wow. Yeah, 26 hour days. Captain. Must be sucked to be a captain. Okay. Do you need any assistance, Doctor? You, uh... <clears throat> no, and I'll kind of, like, slowly, just quickly pull a scalpel out. <clears throat> I've really got to remind myself to keep these things secured somewhere. You know, just set it on the table. <clears throat> that seems dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'll make a note to myself to get these things secured later. Alright. So, uh, we're going to cut to the secondary computer core, which I actually now have a map for. Yay! Ooh. It's a very shiny oh. map. Alright, so, uh, Captain and Moose, uh, you guys walk in and you find that Helix's shell, uh, such as it is, uh, has indeed been repaired and looks... Actually, in almost tip-top shape. I mean, obviously, there's still a few minor damage components. But for the most part, it looks like a very pristine, a very futuristic, sleek-looking shell. Um, and you note that looking at a display that the Helix program, the Helix AI, uh, is not currently within the shell. It is in the sort of secondary computer, quote-unquote, Betty, uh, which is right next to it. Hmm. Okay, Helix, we're here. All right, so uh, there's a moment of transfer as the shell is activated, and uh, the Helix shell begins to look around, and it sort of settles on you, Captain, and uh, Helix says, Ah, good. I was wondering if... I understand Tellarites are a very, shall we say, confrontational species. I was wondering if I started insulting your mother, if you would show up faster. My mother has her own issues. I don't need you to add to them. And it's, you know, obviously her face doesn't have a mouth, but you can tell by her tone that, you know, if she had one, she'd be smiling, which I think would be a little bit odd for Moose because, you know, obviously Helix has displayed emotion, at least, you know, signs of it. An AI showing emotion is kind of a big deal. Um, but in any case, uh, you know, Helix, you know, says, Ah, very good. I simply wish to make sure that our prior conversation about Asylum was considered. Which then I'd have to ask you, GM, uh, what would have been the response from uh, our fledgling Starfleet? So, Starfleet it has been of several minds on this issue. Uh, obviously, they believe any sentient life, whether it be uh, biological or artificial, they believe that uh, artificial life has uh, a right to exist. Uh, they have certain inalienable rights, if you will. Uh, however, uh, there also are concerns about what constitutes a sophisticated computer program and what qualifies actual sentience uh, because that attitude will exist even to TNG era where you know we have uh, what is it a uh, measure of a man where they mm -hmm. debate about whether data is sentient um, mm -hmm. so you're getting two responses from basically two different admirals and it's your call what to do on that they have not given you specific orders Thanks, buddy. Making me put it up me. Mm. That's the perils of being captain. <sighs> Some days the big chair. Uh, okay. 
So just so I know tech, so I know the technical technological specs is this mm -hmm. space is independent computer wise from the main core, right? That is correct. Okay. Okay. Helix. Starfleet is left into my hands to decide what and how I should handle the situation. So I will cut you a, as these humans say, a deal. You will be allowed to leave this space. However, you will not be allowed to interface with any other computer system outside of this room. If you are discovered to interface without my permission, any computer system I will outside this room, I will consider it and act against my instructions. And as this officer sitting next to me will tell you, any act against my instructions is an immediate brig and lockup offense. Is that understood? It is. However, I do have a question. Proceed. Suppose I'm feeling ambivalent and there's some sort of problem that requires me to interface with the computer to, shall we say, save a life. Will that still be a act of aggression in your mind? It would not be. However, once that, once that situation has completed... We will do a. F you will report to this back to this room, and we will do a full computer scrub of the main computer. And if I find any trace of you, or your AI still in there, you will stay here. If you keep enter, fix the problem, and leave with no trace, you will earn more of my trust as time goes on. I believe there is a human expression, a gilded cage. However, I will admit that this is a much better cage than the one I was previously interred in. Very well, I accept your terms. Moose. This Captain. AI, and this being, is now directly under your supervision. Very well. Give me steady and updated reports as to the progression. Any recommendations that you have, I will entertain. But ultimately, I will retain the right to accept or refuse those recommendations. Understood. And anything further, Helix? So Helix starts to respond when, hey, remember what happened in sickbay? Same thing happens here. Power goes out. Uh, deck plates turn off, and you're floating again. Mm. I'm gonna grab the bottom of the console and just I'll keep myself in the chair. Like... So something very interesting does happen with Helix. Uh, Helix remains fastened to the deck plates, and her shell uh, begins to slowly illuminate, uh, almost like a bioluminescence, but obviously mechanical still. Uh, so you can kind of see based on the light she's giving off. Uh, Chief, if this continues to happen, I want seat belts on all my seats. I'd recommend grabbing the um, EV suit uh, boots. They got grab lock on them. But I'll figure it out to see what's happening. All right. So Helix says, well... I don't believe any of you are in danger unless you fly up to the ceiling. However, if you will permit me to use the communicator, I could interface with the computer and discern what the cause of this is. Captain? Chief, would, would you recommend this? Well, we're going to have to do a level one diagnostic of all the systems. If she can do it faster... I could have it said, done in a matter of seconds. Level one takes hours. Benefit of being an artificial intelligence. I get shit done, I believe is the human expression. <laughs> Bet is teaching you some bad phrases. Talk with her afterwards. But Helix. I recommend it. Helix, go ahead and interface. Chief, when this is over, make sure we do an inspection of the primary core. All right. 
I throw. So uh, Helix uh, plucks one of the floating communicators uh, out of the air. And from her sort of underside of her forearm, a wire, a little panel opens up and a wire uh, sort of snakes out of its own volition and connects to the communicator. And there's a momentary pause where you do sort of hear the chirp of the communicator. And we'll say after about 15 seconds, the wire retracts from the communicator. And Helix reports, well, uh, this is very interesting. I believe, uh, Moose, you have a bigger problem on your hand. But it is not something that is related to ship function. Please, my the suspense is killing me. <laughs> Sorry, I I'm used to talking at superluminal speeds. I'm still getting used to talking in meat space. Uh, my point being is that the computer reports that there is no fault, that there is no reason why this room should be in the dark, and and she cuts off mid word as everything comes back online, and you guys settle back to the floor. And there's nothing to indicate why that just happened. Hmm. Seems my chief engineer has some work to do. Looks like it. What uh, What is our current cor uh, current course and speed? Just out of curiosity. Uh, right. You are currently on a leisurely uh, call back to Vulcan. Uh, you're still like a few weeks out, unless you really want to push the engine. So you're like maybe going warp two, maybe. Um, and the reason you're going to Vulcan is you're just picking up some more personnel that, uh, were not part of your initial sort of mission. Uh, so it's nothing major. Like, you don't have specific orders at the moment. Okay. So far, Chief, this has affected, uh, gravity and lighting. If this comes anywhere near affecting the core, we're going to come out of warp until this is figured out I agree with you sir well if you're uh, fine with it I'd like to take helix with me to engineering yes just make sure when the process is done we scrub the core and make sure all components of the AI program has been removed very well and with that I'll just give a nod to uh, moose and I just kind of look at the shell that is helix Mm -hmm. And uh, I just kind of roll out Alrighty. and go over to the bridge. So, uh, because this is a uh, kind of I feel bad at leaving Morris out, uh, but Morris, uh, let's say it's uh, it's end of shift for you. Uh, you're headed back to your quarters. You're headed to uh, get something to eat. Where would you be headed at the end of your shift? Uh, was this a bridge shift I'm just ending? Uh, yeah, let's say that. Uh, this is technically the end of beta shift, um, but you don't have any other duties at the moment. Alright, so first thing is I'll head to the commissary to pick up something, something to eat that's not very messy, and then I'll take that with me uh, to the shuttle bay just to tinker. Okay, so I will put you guys in the launch bay. And uh, Jensen is not there. All right. So uh, as you're tinkering, Morris, uh, I would like you to roll me a insight engineering, please. Uh, the difficulty here will be a two. And if you have anything related to small craft, uh, that would apply here. I do not. I'm more of a flagship kind of pilot. Um, just helm operations is the closest I've got. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not going to be enough. That's fine. I'm I'm more of a navigator. What's the difficulty? The difficulty is a two. Um, I'm not going to spend any momentum. I mean, we're maxed out, right? Yeah. All right. All right. I'll spend one. Okay. Okay, so I will say that this can succeed at cost, but it will be a complication. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's fun. Okay, so Morris, you're tinkering, and you know you're 
double checking your work, you're making sure that there are no problems with the shuttle pod, when something very odd happens, um, you're looking at the impulse engines one moment, you look away to look at a different system, and you look back at the impulse engines, and you remember how I described the first time when you brought shuttle pod one in, how the impulse engines had, uh, I believe it was bad coils? The exact, uh, mm-hmm. the exact same thing has happened almost in the blink of an eye. Just a bit of sandwich falls out of my mouth. Um, it, it's back to normal? Uh, no, it looks like the same condition that ShuttlePod 1 came in with the broken coils. Fuck, 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 fuck. Um, I look around to see if the pieces I need are readily available. Strangely, they are. In fact, it's almost like deja vu. It's the moment when you would have brought their components to repair the shuttle pod. The only thing that's missing is Jensen, but you know that Jensen's not on shift at the moment. These parts aren't normally here, though, are they? Nope. Hmm. I'm going to go up to a comm panel, um... Ensign Morris to Quartermaster? Uh, I forget. Did we? Did someone make the Quartermaster, or should I play them? I don't think there is one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's call the Quartermaster... Let's call him Matt. Matthew. Matthew. Quartermaster Matthew. Uh, so yeah, he says, uh, this is Quartermaster Matthew. Go ahead. Um, yes, I was in the, um, the shuttle bay, and I found that our plasma chambers are ready here to work on the shuttle. Did someone request these already to be brought here? Uh, one moment, I'll check. Uh, no, Ensign, I'm not seeing any requisition forms. Uh, in fact, according to my logs, uh, we should not have any extraneous equipment in the launch bay at the moment. Well, um, not sure why... I'm not sure why they're needed, but they were here already. Um, could someone have grabbed these without logging it? Possibly, but I like to think I keep a very tight ship. Understood. Well, I think we have a little mystery here. Um, if you'd like to join me, I'd, I would return the parts, but it does look like they're needed. Uh, very well. Yes, I, I will indeed join you shortly. And right, uh, thank you. since this is an NPC we're creating up on the fly, I don't have a token, but I will make one for him in the future. Uh, so Matthew uh, does arrive after maybe about five minutes. Uh, Matthew is a older gentleman. Uh, he has sort of a, a Fu Manchu going on. Uh, he does have, it would, yeah, it would appear to be at least somewhat of an Asiatic descent, uh, almost like an Asian-American mix. Um, in fact, if I had to really describe him well, if you remember the sensei from Kill Bill, just age him back a few years. You get the same idea. Um, so he kind of looks around, he spots the components, and he takes a pad and scrolls through it, and he tilts his head to the side and says, Uh, Ensign, you're... did you take these out of the shuttle pod? Um... No, I was surprised to see that they weren't in it. Well, because according to the serial number I have on file and the serial number here, and he points it out for you, my records show that over a month ago we put these very same coils into the shuttle pod. I remember doing that, but I didn't think they'd be the same serials. Um, um, as you can see, it's right there, and... Don't get me wrong, I mean, there there are ways to mix up serial numbers, but in this case, it's it's not something that's easily done. I, I know we've had some 
issue with the distribution of new parts, but this is a little strange, I, I, I'm going to have to admit. Well, as quartermaster, I'm going to look into this on my end. Uh, obviously, parts that should be in other places, obviously not being there. Uh, it's a bit of a concern. Uh, please, if you find any other components like this, even if it is something as minor as a tricorder out of place, please let me know immediately. Uh, understood. Thank you for your help. Um, and then I'll walk back up to the uh, comm panel and uh, wire through to uh, our chief engineer, Mr. Moose. Okay. Moose here. Um, chief, I don't know if you could spare someone, but there's been a bit of a mystery here in the shuttle bay, and I could use some assistance getting the shuttle back up to speed. Uh, we, we apparently need to redo the repairs we originally did on shuttle... Uh, Number one. I can't explain it, sir. I'll send down Jensen. Uh, okay, understood. Mm -hmm. and, uh... So, obviously, Moose, you would have to call and wake up Jensen, but, uh, you know, she doesn't have a problem with it. Uh, after maybe about ten minutes after uh, Quartermaster Matthew has left, uh, Jensen arrives. And uh, she is, of course, uh, kitted out for her shift, and she's still, you know, rubbing the sleep out of her eyes, and she says, Ah, uh, sorry, Anson, you must excuse me. I was not expected to be woken up for another two hours. Uh, uh, my apologies. It's, well, remember when we fixed this? And uh, you look back at uh, the shuttle pod. The coils are gone, and... The engines are fine. Um, one second. Um, I go back up to the panel. Uh, Ensign Morris to Quartermaster? Uh, yes, uh, Ensign. Is is there something... Did you find something else that's out of place? Okay, so you do remember our conversation. Yes, I was just talking with you moments ago. Should I alert the doctor? Is something wrong? Maybe. What did we talk about? We talked about a plasma coil that should have been in the shuttle that wasn't for some reason. Okay, because um, I'm here with uh, Officer Jensen now, and miraculously, it's been returned and the shuttle's repaired. Uh, unless you have any objections, Ensign, I'm going to report this to the captain. No objections, sir. Um, I'm going to... Uh, this isn't part of the conversation. I'm going to buy tricorder, because I don't think I have it on me. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you maybe grab a science officer. Okay. Petty Officer Klein can help with that. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I know we have one of those. Uh, yeah, let's yeah. throw Klein on here. And uh, I'll get his token situated, but uh, yeah, you can go ahead and get started. I'll explain the situation. Uh, it was fixed, then it wasn't fixed, and now it's fixed again. Um, no one's memory appears to be different. I, I don't think this is any kind of temporal anomaly, but... Um, well, to be frank, I haven't started the scans yet. I just got my tricorder right. Right. Um, well, I'd be happy to assist you, Ensign. Um, excellent. Um, well, if you'd like, uh, you take the lead. You're the science officer, but I will do my best. I know these uh, ships pretty well. And uh, we'll say, uh, Jensen's also going to be assisting you here. So if someone wants to pull up her sheet, please. Uh, so, Klein, tell me what your focuses are. Um, astronomical phenomena, botany, and quantum mechanics. I would say that you would apply quantum mechanics in this situation because I think that would be the first thing Klein would check. Alrighty, cool, cool. Uh, the difficulty here will be a three. Uh, your role, Klein, will be a reason science. Uh, Jensen, you will be assisting with a reason engineering. 
And Morris, I will let you determine whether it's an engineering or science for you. It's still reason, but you can use either discipline. Um, I definitely have more of a science background. I will try to understand... Um, I'm not a specialist like Klein, but I do understand quantum theory, so... All right. Jeez, I keep forgetting that we have five rem five momentum. How's... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. What was Jensen's again? Uh, Jensen's is a reason engineering, and she does have a focus. And because this is the second time we've activated Jensen, uh, you all can discuss how you'd like to augment her sheet if you so wish. Uh, if you need the rules for that, uh, let, me, let me quickly pull those up. I believe they start on page 134, right-hand column. Gotcha. So you may give them a value. You may increase an attribute by one. You may increase a discipline by one. You can give them an additional focus. Or you can give them a talent. Now, the only caveat to that is the attribute and discipline can only happen once. Um, so you can't, like, spam attribute rays or spam discipline rays. Mm-hmm. Oh, we can discuss that later. Okay. So just, just remember, you do have a uh, upgrade to her. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to take threat for that complication, and I will still let the succeed at cost by taking more threat. Um, Fun. Good news, bad news. Good news. Doesn't appear to be uh, any sort of uh, temporal anomaly here. You're not detecting chronotons, tachyons, uh, anything of that nature. Uh, you are able to confirm, looking at the serial number, that these are indeed the very same plasma coils that were sort of on the deck moments ago. Uh, and the other thing you'll find before you have to start spending momentum to ask questions is that uh, everything about the shuttle pod seems to be exactly as Morris and Jensen last left it. As in every single repair, every single tweak uh, that had been affected up until today is back the way it should be. Hmm. Well, the good news, Ensign, is uh, nothing appears to be wrong. I'm not detecting any chronotons, tachyons, or anything of the sort, but if your story does prove to be true, we might have some sort of problem. We just don't know what. Yeah, I... If I'm being honest, I would rather have found a problem than we'd at least know what we're dealing with. This is like... It's like a bomb that doesn't go off. You never know when it will. Um, the quartermaster went to speak with the captain, and I should probably follow up there. Um, can you communicate with me if something turns up here? Of course. Alright, uh, thank you for coming down here. Uh, Jensen, I know you were off-duty... Um, I have no idea how long you should keep watching this or not. That's a, it's above my rank. Well, you, you are technically the ranking officer here, sir. Uh, if I may make a suggestion. Please. Uh, I could use at least another hour worth of rack time. Um, Klein, could you manage this until Jensen gets some rack time? Um, I'll do my best. I'll probably just keep running some scans. It's if there's any problem here, I want to find the root of it. Okay. Um, have either of you heard about anything else strange happening on the ship lately? Um, just what's been happening ship wide. The lights going off, and it seems the artificial gravity also turning off. But on my end, nothing too unusual. Other than that. Jensen's. Did I know? Oh, go ahead. Did I know about those things? You did. Yes. Uh, it, it has not been isolated to uh, just when sort of the main PCs are in. Uh, these power outages have occurred across the ship. This is different, though. I think we. I need to let the captain know. Um, thank you. I'll head to the bridge now. Okay. 
All right, and we're going to cut to the bridge. Uh, at this point, Captain, uh, you have heard uh, reports across the uh, sort of across the entire spectrum of these technical gremlins, as they as it were. And uh, luckily, nothing's really affected the warp core or anything surrounding it. Uh, you do, of course, have uh, Moose and Helix working on the issue, but uh, I would think by the or by the number of complaints and reports you're getting that. It might start to be stretching your patience. Like this is starting to get into the territory of what the hell is happening with my ship. So I contact uh, so the chief engineers work. Okay. So let's. <clears throat> hmm. Trying to make a logical decision. Okay. So in that case, nothing's affected the engines really as of yet. So hmm. we'll go ahead and update Starfleet as to what kind of technical issues we're having. And then I would say let's go ahead and see if it could be environmental thing. Okay. Let's uh, let's run some some scans, some concentrated short range scans, and see if it can be an environmental thing as we transit through space. Okay, and I will have uh, Shatoli work on that in the background. Uh, but it is at this point that Morris does arrive on bridge uh, with a report. Um, Captain, I we've I'm noticing some new phenomenon affecting the ship. Um, our shuttle, the uh, Dash 01 has repaired and unrepaired itself um, twice now with the original uh, replacement parts. Um, the quartermaster can confirm that they had been taken out. I have Klein with the shuttle now uh, to continue monitoring this. Very well. Uh, let's have somebody join him. Let's not have him in the space by himself in case... Um, we need a second set of eyes or something happens. And it it's fairly trivial member. for you to order some random Yeah, I was about to say, uh, it could be a random crewman. It doesn't have to be one of us. I'm just a... So, very well. And it is at this point, uh, as all of you are sort of talking about this, that the ship shudders. And uh, Rollins since you are a security officer, you're seeing that a ship has begun to fire at you seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, and you guys are still at warp. I mean, so luckily they missed, but a ship is firing at you. And that's the extent of what your sensors are reporting. Pop the red alert. <laughs> All right, so red alert happens. Uh, shields would normally go up, but you are at warp. So, as far as I've been able to tell, uh, shields are not operable at warp speeds. So, you would have to drop out of warp to no longer uh, be at a risk of breaches from damage. Uh, sir, we're being fired on. Uh, should we drop out of warp? Yes, please. Let's try to get a lock onto where these, these rounds are coming from. All right. Morris, since you're up here, do you want to jump? I've, I've already jumped into my seat. All right, so I'll put us back on this map. So you exit warp, and uh, sure enough, Rollins, you're seeing on your console that moments later, a smaller scale 2 vessel does drop out of warp behind you, and we are going to enter into uh, starship combat. So let me just throw you, uh, throw you guys some turns. Give them two. Let's see, there's five PCs, so you get five turns. And yeah... Uh, the one thing I will say about this, as a reminder, uh, because the enemy vessel is a scale 2, it is a plus 1 difficulty to hit it with all weapons. So, for example, uh, in order to hit it with your torpedoes, uh, at optimal long range, you would need to roll a difficulty 4, and if you were using your cannons, that would be a difficulty 3 at close range. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to let you guys go first. Uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. 
Is this technically considered a scene change, so we'd lose momentum? Yes, it is, and thank you for reminding me. Okay. Stop helping. <laughs> <laughs> um, Captain, should I engage evasive maneuvers? Yes, please. Let's try to get a contact with this ship and figure out what this issue, what the issue is, and why they're firing upon us while we maneuver. All right. Uh, I did want to just double check to see if um. No, that's cool. All right. Yeah, I'll do evasive maneuvers. So. All right. That's going to be a daring and con from you, and the ship will assist you with a structure con. It will be a difficulty one. And it will also cost one power. Um, the the difficulty's two, you said, right? Uh, difficulty one. Okay. I mean, if you want, uh, I could spend threat to make it a difficulty two. Yeah. Uh, that's on you. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. All right. Um, I'm gonna spend one momentum if that's all right with you guys. Yes, please. That's fine. Good catch, by the way, Rollins. I forgot to put it on the GM layer. Well, we've been kind of getting blasted back in time, so there could have. <laughs> All right. Well, the good news is, uh, with without the ship assisting so far, you're at cap momentum. Let's see if the ship gets you any more. Uh, I can roll for the ship. You said structure con. Structure con, correct. Okay. All right. So you have one floating momentum. I don't know that there's anything you could spend it on, save for a create the advantage, but that would cost your floating and a regular momentum. Um, maybe. Um, I can also um take a second action for two momentum. You can. And no, no. I'll since quick action. since oh, you have quick action for free. Right, but well, in order so to I, do I, a, a swift task is what you're you're getting at here. Right, and I don't get the increased difficulty because the first one I did was to fly. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think what I might do is... I don't think there's anything against also doing an attack batter. I would say that it specifically says that uh, attack pattern and evasive action are different things. Uh, because it is not only a difficulty higher to hit you, but it's also a difficulty higher to shoot by the ship kind of a thing. Right. And there's like a talent that gets rid of the difficulty to shoot while you're doing it. Correct. Yeah. So uh, they're, they're two separate things, unfortunately. That's, well, no, I can, as a second action. All right. right? Well, what I'm saying though, is you can't evasive and attack pattern is what I'm trying to say right. here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um... Let's see here. Well, if you guys want, we can use the floating and then one more for me to, I believe, scan for weakness this other vessel um, or something. I, I think he said we could use but, that and one f just to create an advantage. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like in a suggestion about the advantage, I do have one ready, but I don't want to like lead you guys in a direction, if that makes any sense. Um... Well, what is it? Uh, my suggestion would be to use the advantage to say that uh, Rollins and you have hooked up out of sort of out of shift and have gotten a feel for one another's style. And the advantage is for this combat, uh, you will not have a increased difficulty to fire with evasive action. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, that, sounds, that seems pretty good. Um... And then I will remind us, though, that I do have a talent. We have an extra two resistance while the evasive action is up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I like that. That sounds good. Okay, right. so uh, you would go down to five momentum. And unless you quick to action, it would be this mysterious craft's turn. I love the quick to action and permission to fire back, sir. Well, have we tried to establish communications with them first? You have not. I mean, this will do that. <laughs> well, let's try to figure out why they're firing at us before we decide to shoot. Okay, I will say that this would be the co the command option, the command sort of dot. 
And mm-hmm. the good news is it's a difficulty zero task, um, but it will use your command option, and you will be allowed to speak, of course. Oh, yes. Let's... let's uh, at least I can officially log that I attempted before we blow them out of the sky. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> All right, so uh, I believe we have our communications officer. Uh, he's going to be rolling a control engineering, and the ship will assist you with a communications and engineering. And the difficulty here is simply a zero, so just don't roll complications. <laughs> so uh, Chitoli's are that's our... Staros, I think, is our comms. Yeah, mm-hmm. Staros. Uh, okay. Translation, cryptology, and xenolinguistics. Yep, I can't say that word. I today. know what you're saying. Yes, it would apply. <laughs> All right. And then you said the ship was what? Uh, the ship is going to be communications and engineering. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Way to go, ship. So, uh, you guys are back at Cap, and you have two floating momentum again. And, Captain, what do you say? Ship attacking USS Avenger. This is Captain Voss. Please state your intentions. Staros, there is no reply. Uh, There's no reply, Captain. Uh, okay. Uh... Weapons officer, do they still have us locked? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So noted in my log. Let's take them out. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, that is going to end the Avengers' turn. And next up is this mysterious craft. And what this craft is going to do is it is going to fly up into close range... And I'm going to spend some threat so that it retains the initiative, and it is just going to open fire. Okay, so let's break this down. Uh, so they have scored two successes, which is all they need to hit you with their cannons. Uh, they have rolled very poorly on their damage, but One. I am going to spend some more threat to reroll those zeros. Don't they need three to hit us? Uh, you're right, they do need three to hit you, so never mind. They don't hit you at all. Sorry. Yeah, good flying, Morris. No, I, I, I'd rather be kept honest than inflict damage needlessly. Uh, but it is the Avengers' turn. Hmm. Pew pew. Can oh I yes. Overcharge oh. shields. Well, let me, let me kill him. Um. Did we ever run a scan to see how many life signs were aboard the ship? Just out of curiosity. You have not yet. Um, well, I'm going to suggest that we have a ton of momentum. Uh, I could have Forliza do the sensor operation task for our ship and see how many life signs are aboard there, just out of curiosity. And then we can keep the initiative and you can blow them out of the sky if you want. He's curious. Well, I mean, we could disable them. I don't know why you guys think we just like blowing things up. (laughs) Captain likes blowing things up. We're not no the half USS. measures in this organization. What about the USS Murder Hobo? Uh, we can we can target a specific system for right. one extra difficulty. Can... Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm fine with, with that. Advantage. We got a lot of. Yeah, we got a lot going for us. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And just so you know, you can only retain the initiative once per round, so you cannot use quick to action again. Right, it's once per combat, right? Yeah, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's got to be on the first round. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. But we were talking about, like, spending momentum to retain the initiative? Uh, I believe, and I could be wrong on this, but the last time I read it, like, you can't even do it again kind of a thing. Okay, gotcha. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, in so, fact, if you look at the chart, it does not have that R, which oh, means, as far gotcha. as I know, that means you can't do it again. Okay. Makes sense. So yeah, if we could uh, use the face cannons. Okay. Target the engines. Or the weapons, right? Let's break it down. Uh, So right now, uh, the base difficulty is a 2 for, you know, normal firing. It is a scale 2 vessel, so that goes up to 3. 
you have an advantage that your evasive action is not affecting this, so it stays at a three. Aiming at a specific system, because as far as I know, you don't have fast targeting systems, that becomes a four difficulty. Okay. And this would be, on your part, this would be a control security, and the ship would assist you with a weapon security. You've got full momentum. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could buy two more dice, um, which is three momentum. Is that mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, I have focus. I, really up to the captain on what he wants me to hit. Let's take out their engines. Okay. Alright, so if you're buying two extra dice, that's three momentum. I'm going to be a bit of a dick. I'm going to spend some threat and make it a difficulty five. Okay. That's why you don't give them threat, guys. <laughs> oh, we know. We just okay. keep doing it anyway. Yeah. So I have four dice. Mm-hmm. Shipboard tactical systems. Mm-hmm. Oh, would you look at that? Very nice. And the then... ship hasn't even rolled yet. Very nice. I got the ship. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. All I wanted to oh do was zoom, 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 and a pew, pew. So we just get that momentum right back. Yeah, so that's uh, that's eight successes. That's eight successes. So you yeah. get three momentum back. And yeah, go ahead and roll me some damage there, buddy. That is a very impressive shot. And fate. versatile one. Mm -hmm. and, and fate wants us to hurt this ship badly. <laughs> How many? Uh, seven? Uh, um, it's whatever's on the sheet. I believe yeah, it's, it's seven. seven. Yep, I'm looking at the sheet. cannons. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yep, seven. Okay, so right now you're doing four damage uh, before taking into account resistance. Do you want to reroll those zeros? Do uh, well, I guess first off, what do you want to spend your versatile one on? I'd almost say we use that for the resistance, then we can just spend a momentum to re roll those zeros. I agree, oh. that that would be all right. You're rolling three, all right. Okay, so that's going to be a total of six, and you are taking off uh, two resistance. Uh, so your phase cannons, they uh, disengage from the bottom of the hull, or maybe the top of the hull, and rotate and fire on this craft, and yeah, you hit the craft pretty damn well. Uh, however, you notice that even with uh, some additional power thrown into the phase cannons to make them a little bit more piercing... Uh, you only drop them to just above half shields. Well, this is fun. Mm -hmm. That happens, sir. No, and remember, nope. you also lose one power here. Is that a breach, though, for five? I will say that it is not a breach. Oh, jeez. What? Which, oh, you know, right. it is still technically your guys' turn because the ship no longer has any actions because it's only a scale 2. Oh. So if you would like to scan it, I might be able to tell you why that is. What does a verbal, what does a verbal communication like interior of the ship cost us? Uh, between ships, as long as you're not ordering anyone to do anything, it's a free no. action. Okay. Can we... Uh, comms, can we pop... Pipe this image down to Helix to see. Uh, sure. All right. So Helix is actually going to roll here. Uh, let me check. Did I give it access to everybody? I did not. All right. So if someone wants to roll for Helix here, that way it's uh, balanced and fair. Uh, Helix is going to be rolling a reason and security here. Uh, they do not have a focus. However... They do have a lovely talent that means they get one automatic success uh, using all tasks with reason, uh, which oh, is fun. good because the difficulty here is a three at the moment. So they already have one success before any dice are rolled. Okay. And my my intention is to ask the question if Helix is familiar with this or knows what this vessel is. 
Okay. I will say that if you want Helix to roll, this will be your sensor operation, but they can indeed provide you an answer. We've mm -hmm. already shot. So, yes, because maybe the, he it, we it can, can shoot give us insight. Too. Yeah, yeah, it gives insight as to what we're facing. Okay. All right, so we'll knock off sensor operation. And yeah, Helix, go ahead and roll me a uh, reason security, please. Okay. I'll grab Helix since I have her here. So 2d20, no focus. Um, what did you say the difficulty was again? The difficulty is three, but remember, she has one automatic success. Right, okay. Um, Use the next let's die. play it safe, and uh, I'll take a momentum to give her a third die. All right. All right, so reason, security. Oh, wait. Oh, of course I... That's all you need. So Helix reports back, and she says, I've never seen such a craft in my life, but I will point out that it does appear to have a blade of armor. Do we even know what a blade of armor is at this age? Nope. Uh, you'll have to brief me on that later. We don't have time to, to figure that out at the second. Long story short, it's harder to break through the armor. Understood. And I basically return to directing the engagement. Okay. So at this point, uh, the only action left to you is an internal systems roll. So this would be a moose roll. Uh, moose, what oh. would you like to do from the internal systems options? Uh, you could regenerate shields, you could do damage control. Well, actually, you know, none of these tasks, were, you know, none of them apply except power management at the moment. We can do, we can do a second, There, there's something like with the ship, is that the, um, that we could use a console twice? Yes, so you can use a console twice, but I will say you are at four out of six power. So okay. a power management might be useful. But again, I'm trying not to lead you any way, right. shape, or form. Yeah, no, I'll, uh, I'll restart power. All right. So you're going to be rolling either a daring or control at a difficulty of two. Uh, daring or control plus engineering. And EPS, focus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is important because that gets you one momentum. And your total would be five at the moment. So you're able to regain one point of power for succeeding, uh, which would bring you up to five. And you may spend another momentum to get you back up to full. Yeah, I'll do that. Let's keep us at full. Okay. So Alrighty. then you will stay at four momentum. Alrighty. And with that, we start the round anew. So I make refresh. sure to turn off the replicators or any dispensary devices on the bridge so <laughs> we get the extra power back. I need coffee while I shoot stuff, okay? <laughs> why, why isn't my seat ventilated anymore? <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows I love coffee while looking at radar. The, the lens flare generator got turned off. <laughs> oh, uh... Alright, so what's going to happen is uh, this craft is going to get to go first. And it is going to just open fire again. Uh, this time oh. it will hit you. Or no, it won't. No. Um, I was going to say, uh, zeros. Yeah, a complication. that is a complication. Uh, I will buy that off with threat. Uh, but I will also say that with their next action, spending more threat to keep the initiative, um, they will fire again at an increased difficulty. However, I am dropping some th more threat on the extra roll. So it's a very oh, costly fun. threat spend here, but I think it'll be worth it. And I don't still think... Miss. Yes, that is still a miss. So yeah, it opens fire twice and still misses you. And yep. it is literally you guys completely just go until it is a new round. Captain, I believe I can scan the armor for weaknesses. Please do. All right. First, I'm going to scan for weaknesses for our sensor operation task. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're close range. They are indeed at close range. Let's. I think it's difficulty one then. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're going to be doing um, a control science, and the ship will assist you with a sensor security. Okay, I'd like to buy one die, please. Okay. Alrighty. It's uh, control science. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then sensor security for the Avenger? Correct. Yeah, and... And I should be able to reroll one of my dice because the sensors are assisting me. All right, so you can reroll any of those die you wish. I own just because the target there's a little better. Mm -hmm. For a technologically advanced ship, it didn't hit us for shit. <laughs> All right, so hey, you get a momentum right back, and yeah, just remember that you now have. Uh, a uh, a piercing two quality on your next attack, and uh, if you buy any bonus d20 for that attack, you get an additional challenge die per d20 bot. Ooh. Okay, and now I'm gonna, if you guys want, I can switch us into an attack pattern for two uh, momentum. It'll still be a task, but uh, it it won't be even any harder. I'm a hundred percent okay with that. If you yes. guys are, no, I'm I'm down with it. Just for the fact that we gotta do as much damage as we can before this thing gets chewed back. All right. Yeah. Um, looking for this now. Uh, it should it's... be a daring and con on your part, yeah, and it will two. be difficulty two. Uh, and the ship will assist with weapons con. Oh wait! Before we go on further, mm -hmm. I need to remember my untapped potential. You do, because yeah, that could give yeah. me threat. We Ooh. get two more momentum. All right, so we just get the momentum from the swift task right back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and then I'll buy one die for attack pattern. All right. Alrighty. And it was what for the Avenger? Weapons and con. Weapons con. Got it. All right, so now up there. Oh. All right, so it was a difficulty two, which means you do get two momentum. I will say you can spend that two momentum to get rid of the complication. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay, so right. you, you so stay, stay at three, three momentum. So, uh, Morris, you uh, switch from evasive action gamma to attack pattern alpha, and until the start of your next turn... Uh, it is one difficulty less to shoot, but it is also one difficulty easier to hit you. Oh, and I to think. keep us... Uh, yeah, they, I think that's one of the erratas that they forgot to put in the core. Mm -hmm. um, but that has a power requirement of one, mm -hmm. but the scan for weakness did not. Right, so you should be at five power overall. All right, that is my turn. All right, so again, because it's only a scale two vessel, uh, it cannot act again, but you have three more actions remaining to you. Let's let's go ahead and fire first and possibly uh, see how this comes out before we okay. make a decision. And I recommend we buy at least a couple dice because we get extra damage for every die we buy. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, if we buy two more damage, we're out of momentum. Yeah. Could get yeah. it back, I mean... Yeah, We're probably gonna get it back. This is true. This you is really true. Do. Uh, yeah. Do you still want me to go for engines or weapons? Oh, uh, let's go ahead and keep hitting the same thing. Hopefully. Okay. So, so yeah, let's go ahead and burn the momentum. Give us two more dice. Hopefully, oh. we get some back. Alrighty. All right. So, uh, control security on uh, Rollins' part. Ship's going to be a weapon security. Difficulty here is a, only a two because of attack pattern. All right, that's three successes already. Let's see what the ship gets you. All right, so now help from the ship. So you get one momentum back. And yeah, go ahead and roll me a seven challenge die, please. So we bought two dice. Nine. Nine. Um, nine. You're, right, nine. you're correct. Oh, wait, is it uh, challenge die or straight damage? Uh, it no. is challenge die, so it oh, is not. Oh, boy. Okay. And we have piercing two. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. 
So here's what's going to happen because you rolled so well. Um, you do strike the craft and you do hit it in engines. However, you did so much damage. Uh, that is essentially three breaches before even accounting for uh, any versatile effects. And it's only a scale two vessel, which means that as your phase cannons fire, uh, the ship buckles and begins to list, uh, venting plasma, and then, boom, it's gone. Where are three breaches coming from? So five, it's more than five damage. Yep. Uh, it depleted the shields. And okay. hold up, what's Ten the third two. one? Yeah, what is I, the third it'd one? only be two. Right, it would only it doesn't be two. have high yield or anything. Okay, uh, then I am going to spend threat to make it a third. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, baby, baby. Uh, all right, <laughs> but you guys are out of combat, and I'll put us back on the bridge. Oh, yeah, engines it, explode when you hit them. They, they kind of do. So is there debris? Well, how much debris is floating out there right now? Not a whole Shipboard? lot. Any hull pieces? Uh, you could certainly try to track down a hull piece. I want a hull piece. Let's, let's make that happen, crew. All right. So, Morris, if you want to try and track down a hull piece... I'd like you to do a reason science assisted by the ship's sensor science. And for reasons that might become apparent, this is a difficulty four. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do I want to buy a die? Yeah. Yeah, let's go for it. I'll buy a third die, reason science, uh, sensor operations. Mm hmm. All right, that's three successes. We need just need to see Come a success on. from the ship. Come on, ship. Come on, ship. Come on, and ship. The ship was... Sensor science. Uh, sensor science. Okay. Come on, ship. Come on, ship. Come on, ship. Yes! Very nice. <laughs> so you get Boom! a <laughs> So, Wait, let me use let me use my technical expertise to roll us out of this success. How about you don't? <laughs> oh wait, wait. Untap potential. Yeah. yeah. Hey, two more. <laughs> wow, yes. I really like my pilot. Me and him are gonna have some drinks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Morris, it's the damnedest thing. Uh, every time you lock onto a piece of the hull or some bit of debris. Uh, it keeps almost like vanishing from your sensors. However, because you did succeed, I will say you are able to lock on to a piece long enough to beam it into the ship if you so wished. Captain, this is the damnedest thing, but every time I lock onto a piece, it disappears. Uh, however, I, fa I have found a whole hull piece uh, that we can transport in. Let's go ahead and put that in the cargo bay and send... Chief, uh, chief engineer to take a look at it as soon as er, get the chief engineer there first and then beam that in in could the space hostile though I mean we could have radiation um I got a couple free questions is it irradiated uh not really like it's um, nothing I'm you need to worry about captain I'm not seeing any uh radiation but I'll pipe the information to your console Thank you. I just want to make sure if it's it's maneuvering and vanishing that we see somebody or somebody's in there to see it arrive. Okay, so let's cut to the cargo bay then. Uh, Moose, I think for obvious reasons you would be there. Uh, who else is coming with you? Mr. Anderson. All right. Yes, sir. Let me find Anderson. There he is. Boop. And I will fix his token. And uh, as I'm doing that, uh, you guys are uh, waiting in... What is... Anderson's a petty officer, right? Uh, Ensign, I think. Ensign. Okay. Ensign. Um, so, uh, you know, you're, you're in the cargo bay. You give the go-ahead to beam in the hull fragment. And... You know, it does beam in uh, a sort of section of a hull about the size of uh, 
say, a lunchbox. So it's it's a very small piece, may, maybe about a foot uh, in uh, in length and less than that, less than half of that in width. Uh, however, after the transport is complete, you notice immediately that it's, uh, for lack of a better descriptor, it's almost like Thanos has snapped the lunchbox because it is disintegrating before your very eyes. And there's some good scans of that now. Yeah, if we can bust out scanners and start... Yep, I will say that this is an extended task, and you have two intervals before this thing is completely gone. Um, So this is going to be a reason engine... Well, let me me type it out. So the work track here is going to be a a 10. The magnitude will be a 3. The difficulty will be a 4. And there will be one resistance. Uh, the base diff or the base task will be a reason engineering, and you can assist each other on this. All right. Um, I'm gonna pop my determination. Okay. Let's see. And because I need to say this, by two intervals, I mean if you do not spend momentum to cut your interval in half, you only get one shot at this. Okay. Uh, so the value they want, I... No, uh, I, I really want to get information out of it, so I don't know if any of my values actually apply. The only one I think that might is it is... Different. Uh, to build the go where no man has gone before? Mm-hmm. Did that work? Sure, why not? Wait. Get to three momentum? Yeah. Oh, no, that's one. spirit of discovery. Never mind. Um, all right. And then... So what am I rolling exactly? Yeah, so you're reason. rolling a daring or control engineering. Control engineering? Didn't, didn't or reason engineering, reason sorry. A bit ago? Yeah. <laughs> We would love control engineering, that'd be great. <laughs> now, unfortunately, anything that involves scanning something, as far as I've been doing, it's always a reason. Uh, can, is it okay if we use an extra dice? Well, we might need the moment. How many momentum is it to cut the time interval in half? One. You need to spend at oh, least okay. one. Gotcha. All right. Okay, so, so yeah. So I'm using a determination. I'd actually need to spend... How much two. momentum to get? We would spend dice. two to get the next dice. We're okay with that. Yeah, as long as we have the momentum to cut that time interval in half, I think we're good. All right. So yeah, I think you have to spend every single one of your momentum to do it. Okay. All right. Um, now this is a piece of metal. Would my fabrication focus apply? I'll let it happen. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. No. So, Anderson, you can assist with your own reason engineering, but there is a complication here. Because it was a difficulty of four. Never mind. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so we're at three successes three right at the now. moment. Okay. Come on, Anderson. Transporters and replicate? <laughs> unfortunately, no. <laughs> oh. All right. So, unfortunately, uh, you are <sighs> unable to get coherent scans. Now, because you did spend to reduce the difficulty uh, or the interval by one, you do have another shot at this. However, in order to do so, you must give me at least one threat. And I will say before we even attempt a roll, does Moose have Miracle Worker? Yes. Okay. Then to be clear, so we're all on the same page here, in order to succeed on this task, you must do... 10 work uh, after resistance. It is still difficulty 4, but in order to do enough, or no, it would be 11. You need to do 11 work here in order to succeed at this task. And I'm going to let you determine whether or not you even attempt this. Because this would be a rather significant threat spend on your part. Uh... And tricores aren't ship computers either. Mm-mm. Yeah. Um, I don't, what do you guys think? I I'm think bored. to uh, to get that much for information that might uh, not be super valuable, 
I'm personally against it, but majority well, rules. How many dice would you be rolling here? Like, is it two plus the discipline or three plus? Uh, it is two plus the discipline, so you'd need to roll pretty well on your challenge die. Yeah. I can't think of any threat spends we would need to make before the roll, right? The only one would be the time interval. Right, so you have to spend one for the time interval, but also you have to remember that it is still a difficulty four, so there probably would be a threat spend for that as well. Yeah. And oh, on another tag. I see. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, yeah, we're looking at a lot of threat. Mm. Mon Capitan? You're on site. I mean, you really don't have time to you know, you don't really have time to converse with the captain. What would your character's initial response be? This is all out of character talk. Well, no, no, I know, but I'll, just to be fair, what would your character do? Uh, I'll spend it. I'll do it. All right. Well, then that's the, the way. Threat. <laughs> let's 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 play it up. All right. We so, how it. many die are you buying with threat? Uh, since it's disappearing in my first attempt failed, I'm going to give you the maximum. Okay, so I'm taking six threat, you're rolling five dice. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, my So, unfortunately, Rollins, unless you roll a one here, uh, that's a big negative. So, Rollins, reason engineering... Uh, oh. Well, it is a one, but it is not the one, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, oh, man. All those dice. <laughs> Minimum effort, Anderson. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> 75% chance, and you got two out of five. Yeah. That's, that's, that's RNG for you. Uh, so, yeah, unfortunately, Moose, Anderson, I mean, you're trying every trick you can think of. You're You're doing your damnedest, but... The last bit of the metal just sort of vanishes into the ether. Oh, shit. Ah, my one weakness. Vanishing metal. Uh, Moose to captain. Go ahead, chief. It's gone. Did we get anything out of the scans? Nothing conclusive. Partial scans here and there, but not enough. I appreciate your attempt. I know you tried hard. Uh, I'll go look over the sensor. Maybe you can get lucky in a few years. Go ahead and log what you did get out of it. Maybe we can do something later on to add it to another... something else and get a complete image. I'll do. All right. Let's go look to Anderson. I was like, oh, I knew I should have... Should have taken a break today. Let's go back at it. Um. All right. So it is at this point that we are going to take our five to ten minute break. And remember, I do mute the stream. (laughs) So we will be right back in about ten minutes.
right, and welcome back from our break. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to transition to, say, about half a day later. Uh, Moose, you and your team, uh, which now includes Helix, are, you know, going over the ship with a fine-tooth comb. You're trying to figure out the source of uh, basically the mysterious outages, uh, anything that you can glean from the attack, if there was any damage there. And so far, you're not seeing anything wrong with any system. In fact, it might even be strange because everything is working as intended. Uh, Moose to science officer. And totally petty, o leave. petty officer Klein here. Oh, Klein. Uh, can you give me a readout of all the uh, ambient sensor logs for the last uh, two days? Everything. EM wakes, fields, disruptions, anything that we may have come in contact with or passed. Uh, sure thing. And I'll go ahead and have a quick look through the logs, see if anything's unusual. Okay, so I will say it does matter who looks through the logs here. Um, if Moose does it, it's an insight engineering. If Klein does it, it's an insight science. And the difficulty here with a threat spend, and there's a reason for it, the threat spend, it will be a difficulty four. Okay. And you have no momentum at the moment, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. And I don't mind you metaing here to see who has the higher score, but you cannot assist each other on this. Right. Uh, my insight science is a 14. Uh, insight 7, engineering 5. Okay, so mine's higher here. His is higher, but I believe Moose has a focus, so that is the trade-off. Right. Um, would... Uh, so, would quantum mechanics apply again here, or no? It would, yes. Okay. So I have the higher score and a focus at this point. Right, but the downside is you don't have any talents, and you don't have the ability to re-roll with determination. Now, I know Moose would have to change a value to do it, uh, but it is technically something he could do. Right. Well, I think since he asked a science officer to do it, I think it'll probably be Klein that does it, if that makes sense, I guess, with Moose. Yeah, you can make it through Helix. <laughs> Alright, sure. Yeah. Alright, so, let's see. Insight Science. And it is difficulty 4, so you probably have to spend some, uh, some yeah, threat here. Yeah, some threat. Woohoo. Um, the vessels. I'd say, I'm, I'm only gonna give him one, and just hope he crits, I think. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so you did get three successes. I will allow this to succeed at cost. Okay. However, I will take threat for it. Cool. Alright. <laughs> so, uh, what you notice, Klein, is that there are no discrepancies save for a very odd EM wave pattern that was detected in a certain crew member's quarters. Whose quarters was it? The ones belonging to Morris and Jensen. Um, Lieutenant Moose, if you have time, you may want to come see this. Hi, right, Emerson. Um, Keep the ship running, I'll be right back. Yes, sir. Right. So, uh, decline. because I, uh, Made a, 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 a map for it. We're going to use an office. Hey. All right. So, ah, I'll have to go through and fix everyone's token. But uh, there's Klein and there's Moose. Um, there aren't many discrepancies, save for a strange EM wave pattern. And, um, I don't know how to say this any better, Lieutenant, but, uh, it. It's coming from Morris and Ensign Morris and Petty Officer Jensen's quarters. All right. Uh, compare the initial reading of this against the first incident in Sick Bay. On it, Captain. Uh, I almost said Captain. <laughs> um, on it, Lieutenant, and 
I'll compare them, and is it the same? I will say that you have an option of giving me a threat to answer that question. Yeah, yeah, I think we need to figure this out. I'll give you the threat. All right, then yes. In fact, the very first instance does correlate with a surge in the EM wave pattern. And if you continue to look, every single instance of a failure and even the weirdness in Shuttle Bay coincides with the EM wave pattern. Um, and he kind of like, you almost see him get semi-excited. Um, they're the exact same, Lieutenant. Um, I'll be right back, and he'll hand the pad to you, and he's going to run out the door and try and find Ensign Morris in Jensen's quarters. All right. Well, I mean, as it so happens, you're probably just next door. So, Moose, if you want to follow him. Uh, yeah, I'll follow him. All right. So, let's cut to... Uh, where did I put it? There they are. Enlisted quarters. Uh, so... Uh, this is uh, both Morris's and uh, Jensen's quarters. However, uh, you would need to have Moose input his uh, command code in order to open the door. I'll kind of look over at Moose. Really? How would we do this first? Knock, knock, knock. There is no reply. But the... Uh... You know, just hit the uh, comm panel. I was like, Morris Jensen, what's your location? I, I, I'm in the commissary. And All Jensen, right. you just saw an engineering, so quite literally no one's home. All right. Uh, Morris, we're going to be entering your quarters. Just a courtesy heads up, not asking for permission. Okay. And uh, he'll override Understood. the code. All right. So, yeah, you put in your override code, and because you're senior staff, it opens for you. And, uh, Morris, since, uh, you know, it is your quarters, what do they look like right about now? Uh, there's a tangerine peel on the desk. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it's pretty neat. As soon as we enter, Klein's pulling out his tricorder and running scans. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a reason science, please. Difficulty two. Okay. And uh, I'd say, Moose, you can assist him on this. Uh, uh, quantum mechanics apply here? Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Hey, what am I rolling again? Sorry. Uh, either a reason science or a reason engineering. Hey, two successes. Very nice. I don't think I have anything to for focus. Yeah, no focus is here, unfortunately. All right, so Klein, uh, you are detecting a, a residual pattern, and it is coming from the bottom bunk. Hmm. Um, it appears it's coming from the bunk, Lieutenant. Um, and he's probably going to. Um, controlled chaos is probably the best way to describe it. Uh, mm -hmm. probably tear off the mat, not tear off, but like, if it's detached, like pull it out and see if there's anything there. Okay. Uh, so you remove the mattress. There is nothing underneath of it. <sighs> hmm. However, if you do give me a threat, I will throw you a bone and answer a question. <laughs> Oh, shit. There's <laughs> not any bones in there. <laughs> um. Yet. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, Clyde wants to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, I'll give you the threat. All right. Then uh, when you continue to scan, you realize that while faint, the readings are concentrated on the pillow. Hmm. Um, scanning the pillow, I guess, for the question, mm -hmm. um, is there anything unusual about its composure or if something of the sort? Yes, it is unnaturally soft and fluffy. You think that if you were to put your head on this pillow and fall asleep, you would have an amazing night's rest. Alrighty. Like a quantum amazing? <laughs> um... 
I guess this would be a question for Morris. Uh, which bunk is his? Morris, the your top, top or the bunk. bottom? Your top bunk. Okay. Um, I'll pull out my communicator at this. Well, I'm going to look over the pillows. Is there anything like inside it that's unusual? Like I'll reach my hand in the cover and uh, kind of yeah, feel around. It's foam instead of the usual feathers. <sighs> we'll probably need to take this for some sort of further scanning. Um, I'll pull out my communicator. Uh, Petty Officer Klein to Petty Officer Jensen. Uh, go ahead. Uh, this may seem a little bit odd, but the anomaly causing the problems on this ship appear to be coming from your pillow. I'm 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 sorry. It's I, I'm still working off uh, some tiredness. You you said it's coming from my pillow. Yes, as unusual as it sounds, that it seems like it's the source. Okay, I mean, do whatever you need to to keep the ship safe. Uh, ship safe. Uh, will I get a new pillow? I'm sure we can get you a new one, Pet uh, Jensen. Thank Jensen, you. report to Sick Bay, please. Uh, of course, sir. I was gonna look at Klein and was like, "You realize it? Her pillow, really?" I I know it's unusual, but I think the our safest bet is probably to find a way to quarantine this and run further scans. That's just my suggestion. Sure, I'll go let the captain know. Alright. When you open the door, I'm standing in the hallway just at perfect attention. You left a peel on your desk. Get it cleaned. Yes, sir. <laughs> smile and walk past. Him. Uh, oh, I love it. All right, so um, it just Morris is like, "What did I do?" <laughs> uh, poor Morris. All right, so order of operations here. Moose, are you going to the captain or are you going to sick bay? Oh, uh, I'll pay the captain to meet me at sick bay. Okay, so let's cut to sick bay then. All right, so captain, you're there as well. Let's see. And, I'll assume I've recovered the stress from the scalpel yeah, yeah, this, at this point. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, Captain, you arrive, and uh, at the moment, Jensen's not there. Uh, their token is, but pretend they're not there at the moment. So, Captain. Yes, Chief. I uh, found an interesting reading uh, during the occurrences of the uh, loss of power and light. Uh, it was an EM reading uh, located by the science officer Klein. Uh, we followed it to crew quarters. And a f diabolical pillow is now in custody. But more importantly... Did you say diabolical pillow? Yes. Uh, Klein was very eager to take it for observation and containment. Uh, I believe that we should also examine the person who sleeps upon the pillow, make sure they're okay, just in case if this pillow is imbuing them with, you know, radiation or some form of illness. A pillow. Diabolical. Brand new sentence territory. <laughs> <sighs> so, I have a ship that has multi-racial devices on here that don't want to work together. I have an AI that we basically harbor it like a pet. And now you're telling me that the cause of my power losses is a pillow. Yeah. Yeah, welcome to Starfleet. <laughs> <sighs> Some days I want to go back to my trade business. Uh, we won't have much fun, though. Oh, you don't know how my trade business was. Okay. Let's do an investigation on the, as you quote, diabolical pillow, and see if we can come up with the actual cause. I don't think a soft thing lay your gigantic human bulbous heads on 
is going to be diabolical enough to cut our power, so there's got to be something more to it. That's why I'm asking the person who sleeps on the pillow come down to sickbay. And it's right about then that Jensen walks in, and she sees the captain, uh, stands at attention, says, Sir, uh, sorry, sir, uh, reported as soon as I could. Good to see you, Petty Officer. I, I just got a question. Um, is that your issued pillow that we have currently, I guess, uh, locked up for being bio- diabolical? She looks at you very confused. Sir, uh, diabolical? No, I simply requested a softer pillow from Quartermaster Matthew. Ah, so it is a Starfleet issued pillow. That's not one you brought in with your personal items. That is correct, sir. Mm. Good, good, good. Moose just has this big grin on his face about the whole pillow talk. <laughs> Yay, phrasing. <laughs> 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 uh, petty officer, if you would, I just want to run some quick scans to make sure whatever this is isn't affecting you. Uh, of course, just show me where I need to sit. Um, and I'll maneuver her to the bio bed and use our little MRI looking thing. Okay, so she goes in. All right, so Mr. Master Chief for Liza, I need you to yeah. roll me. A reason medicine, All assisted right. by the ship's sensors medicine. Okay. And I'm going to make this a difficulty five task. Oh, lovely. But if you do succeed on this, you will have an answer, which I think you will find very satisfying. Alrighty. Um. Hmm. Sure. I'll see if one of his points of determination applies here. All right. Um, a little bit of a stretch, but all life deserves saving, considering this might be a source of radiation that could be affecting her. Sure, I, I think that's fair. Okay. Um. Yeah, and I think I'll also give you two threat for a f- third die. Okay, remember, it is a difficulty five, so yep. you would need to crit uh, on either your die or the ship's die to succeed. Oh, he's in sick bay, though. Does he make it easier? This is including the sick bay already. Ooh. Well, if I'm rolling three dice and then I get the two auto successes... Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Then yeah. Yes. Okay, so reason medicine... Um, maybe an applicable focus here, uh, diagnosis or xenobiology? They would apply, yes. Alrighty. Alright, so that's already six successes. Let's see if the ship gets you anything. Who's rolling the ship? I have it up on my screen. What do we need to roll? Sensors, medicine. Sensors, medicine. Yay, go for screen. All right, so you guys actually get... What is that? You get two momentum. Two? All righty. Master Chief, you realize something very odd about Jensen. At yeah. At first glance, appears to be human. Nothing wrong with her. However, you do notice that there is just the smallest bit of a discrepancy with her neural pattern. And, and... <laughs> the more you look at it... The more you realize a human should not have this level of neural activity. In fact, this neural activity would suggest that her brain, if it's human, is operating somewhere on the magnitude of 2,000 times more efficiently than a human's brain. And that's just a guess. Um, well, this is interesting. Um, and by interesting, you mean what, Doctor? Um, I'm going to, like, while she's in there, just kind of quietly talk to them. Mm-hmm. Um, the possibility here is very real that she might not be human. Um, her 
brain activity is 2,000% above what any human should be capable of. I mean, she could be dangerous, but judging from her performance here on the ship, like, it, it's, it's interesting to say the least. Um, in medical school on Ryza, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, and I kind of give Chief Engineer a little bit of a look, kind of like, hey, go push that little panel over there and uh, call our tactical security officer. At least send somebody down here while we confront this person before. Uh, yeah, please. <laughs> All right. So just for my sake, uh, Rollins, would you come yourself or would you send someone else? Uh, I'd come down with... An additional person or two, actually. Okay. Uh, if the captain's involved, yeah. Yes, right. please. I'm a lot of things, but Beefy's not one of them. And then, once they've all arrived, I'll kind of, like, look to the captain, like, I guess I have to let her out at some point. Oh, yes, and please, doctor. I'll kind of, you know, slide her out of there. All right. And uh, as she slides out and she takes a look around, she looks not only confused, but worried. And she says, uh, is everything all right, sirs? This is... This is going to walk up to her and stand next to her. He's just going to look at the captain and Rollins, like, have a hand slightly raised, like, just calm down. And I'd assume, could I... Could I have the results of that scan on a data pad or something of the sort? Yeah. Um, I'll kind of, you know, by Lieutenant Moose, I'll show her the results on the data pad. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll have to explain this to me, Doc. Uh, I, there's a reason I didn't go through the academy. I was terrible at medical stuff. Well, um, with... Uh, to put it in simple terms, your brain activity and mental capacity is much more above what a human should be. It would go as far to suggest that you're, you might not be human, Petty Officer Jensen. I'm not human? What, what would I be if not human? Um, and, oh boy, uh, that's something we might not know, Jensen, but until we find out otherwise, I'm going to treat you as a human and treat you as one of my own family. So, uh, we'll, we'll try and figure out what's going on as best we can. And Jensen kind of looks around at everyone and she settles on Moose. Says, sir, I'm getting a little bit scared here. Put his hand on her shoulder like, you'll be fine. I'm going to stay with you. I'm just going to figure out what's been happening. And Moose, when you touch her, there's a flash of light. And you're flung backwards. And you do catch yourself before you like actually hit anything or the floor. But you do go backwards, and everyone sees this. Uh, in a rare occasion, for Lisa's gonna have like his phaser not not pointed, but out. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment I'm able to like rebalance myself, I immediately move forward just to like hold up my hands, like don't, no, it's okay, I'm fine, she's fine. Yeah, and Jensen, hey, Jensen Jensen does look very confused. She's like, I what's going on? What I'm are you alright, Moose? I'm I'm fine. Doctor, all fine. What, what's going on, Doctor? I, th this is not normal. Uh, I wish I knew, Petty Officer. This is something unlike anything I've seen before. Um And I'm probably to no avail, but I'm gonna desperately desperately go back through any Starfleet records or any records, period, to see if there's anything like this, and 
any sort of record. All right. So very quickly, while this this is all going on, Morris, you're back in your quarters. You've cleaned up the peel. Um, and maybe you're doing a little bit more cleaning. Is that fair to say? Um. Yeah, senior officer. No, just like the rest of it's it. the rest of it's the rest of it was pretty clean. Um, and given how long that took, at this point, I think I've gotten out my um my practice pad and I've started drumming just to kind of work out my stress. Okay. So, you know, as you're, uh, you know, banging around on your drums, uh, you notice that while uh, the pillow on Jensen's bunk is now gone, you do notice that slipped in between the sheets appears to be a old-time parchment letter sealed with a wax seal. Um... Do I recognize the seal? Is or is it addressed to someone? It simply says on the front of the envelope, "You will know when to open this, Sarah." Sarah. And remember, Sarah Jensen is her name. I see. Um. I. Was that there before? Uh, probably, if it was, the only reason you're seeing it now is because the bunk was flipped, and, you know, there was just such a thorough inspection of your quarters. So, this was probably hidden or squirreled away somewhere, or at least that would be your guess. Right. Um. I will back. But I'll... Pull out my tricorder just to see if there's any weird... Well, I don't know that anything weird happened other than that a pillow's missing. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I guess I did pick it up to see if it was addressed, but seeing that it was addressed to her, I mean, that's it's, it's a strange thing to have something so archaic but not impossible. Um... I, I guess I'll leave it be. Okay. That's not my business. Fair. Uh, so, back at sickbay. Uh, yeah. Uh, we resume the scene as it was. Did we get a scan of the discharge that the petty officer released? Uh, yes. And in fact, it was another EM discharge. Hmm. Um. Moose is going to walk over to one of the bio beds and he's going to point at one in front of him and uh, look to Jen's like, come on, hop up. Uh, all right. And, uh, yeah, she, we'll say uh, she hops up on this one. I'll tell yeah. you how I lost... I'm I'll walking tell you how over I, here. I'll tell you how I lost my leg to a targ. You know, she's listening. Uh, she doesn't exactly understand how this is relevant, but she's listening, and... This well, does keeping her distracted. Yeah, I was gonna say this does give Voss uh, for Liza and Rollins a chance to talk. Doctor, did she, do you think she has any control over this EM burst that she seems to have? Well, uh, judging from how confused she was by it happening, um, I would say no. An engineer that has EM interference coming out of her pores. This is not an engineer. I'm not. I'm sure. I want touching equipment. No, and I think that's a safe way of possibly trying to control this, Captain. But if not engineering, where could she go? I mean, I don't want to lock her up. Well, I mean, I don't want to lock her up either. But if she can't control it, just being in a passageway and a discharge go off, depending on what conduits or power structures are around her, it is inflicted. I'm not saying that I think she would intentionally do it, but obviously this is occurring intentionally or not to several systems on the ship. Does appear to be generated by stress, right? Activated by stress? Would you agree with that, Doctor? 
Um, it certainly what seems so. Um, <sighs> well, we quick. can real quick. Can we correlate? Oh, okay. Uh, real quick, let me check Rollins' sheet or not Rollins for Liz's sheet. For Liz, I'm gonna whisper you something. Okay. I just gotta remember how to get it to you. Ooh, whispers. This is going to be fun. I will Slash whisper w. to you on Discord. Sure thing. We could correlate where she was when all the activity happened. While uh, you guys are like all kind of sitting there, Lucy just like, so yeah, I was paying the targ, you know, giving a nice little scratch and. Uh, <laughs> I woke up one morning and uh, I guess I forgot a feed light last night and there's nine on my right leg. Hmm. Um, I'll kind of, after thinking for a bit, uh, Petty Officer Jensen? Uh, yes, Doctor. Uh, during the past few nights, would you say you had trouble sleeping? Uh, yeah, I, I've had a, a series of nightmares, uh. I didn't think anything uh, of it, but do you, do you think that's relevant? Um, it very well could be, and I'll kind of sit on the bio bed a across from her. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you describe to me at all, like, what these nightmares were like? Uh, well, uh, there, there were a few kinds. Uh, the first was that I was stuck in a black void, and there was there was nothing around me, and it was just nothing. It was it was weird. Uh, and then there there was a dream that the the ship was under attack from something, and uh, there there were also uh, uh, you know the last time I saw my mother, uh, yeah, I I would say those are maybe like the the most ones I remember. Huh. Uh, and I'll kind of wave the captain over. Do you mind if he joins in on this conversation before he arrives, petty officer? Uh, no, I mean, I, I'm just as confused as everyone else is, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, one quick question. Uh, do you... Did you ever get glimpses of these nightmares in consciousness? Or... Um... Not really, no. I just... Just nightmares when I was sleeping. Hmm. Uh... Captain, as odd as this may seem, I think that her dreams have some correlation to what's been happening. Uh, she s described times when, in her sleep, her nightmares, she would just see blackness, which could explain our power outages. Uh, she had one about a ship attacking us, which could also explain what we just encountered. And... Okay, so there's the blackness, the ship attacking us, and then what was the... She had another one, but I can't remember what it was right now. Uh, the last time she saw her mother. Last time she saw her mother. Uh, where did you see your mother, Petty Officer? Uh, it was a bar in... I think it was Baton Rouge? Uh, it was my 18th birthday, and she she handed me a letter and said that I would know when to open it. And after that, uh, you know, we had a, a normal talk, but uh, she went to the bathroom, and then I never saw her again. I, obviously, you know, I, I filed reports, and mm -hmm. uh, everyone looked into it, and no one could find a trace of her. She huh. simply just didn't exist. And after hearing that, I'll take out my communicator really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Master Chief Ford Lizza to Ensign Morris. Yes, sir. Um, we believe that your roommate, Petty Officer Jensen, um, as odd as this seems. Uh, her nightmare she's been having from sleep um, appeared to be 
for lack of a better way of putting it, almost premonitions to what's been happening. Uh, she's had nightmares where she's seen nothing but blackness, which can explain our power outages. Uh, a ship attacking us, which could also explain what happened earlier, and um, a letter that was given to her by her mother, and she said that there was no trace of her after that. Um, Why are there you anything telling me this, Doctor? Well, I'm just trying to cover all my corners. Did anything unusual did you find anything that might have been unusual in your quarters afterwards or what did and you'll kind of hear me say over the communicator to jensen uh what did the letter look like uh it was old-timey parchment uh wax seal i i huh. kept it in my bunk um yeah i've i've i saw that letter uh it was on the bed. Um. Would you mind bringing it up to sick bay? Uh, did I hear Jensen over the comm? Yeah, you would have heard her say that. Um. Sure, I'll be right there. All right. And yeah. So uh, yeah, I grab the letter and I'll head over to sick bay. So you know, but I'm not, I'm not handing it over until I see Jensen. Fair. So yeah, Morris, you walk in and you see that pretty much every senior staff member is here, plus Jensen. And Jensen looks very confused, uh, looks very concerned. Uh, in general, is starting to maybe have a small panic attack. Um. Jensen. I'll walk and over. And see, in the. And I think it's what he brought two security officers with him, Rollins. Yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Rollins, would you mind? Uh, you don't. Not you're cutting in and out. Instead of being here. Yeah, you're cutting in and out there. You want me to withdraw a couple of the people? Uh. The I think that's what he said, but unfortunately, I think he he got DC'd. No, I'm here. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, oh. you were you were cutting in and out there. Okay. Uh, basically, all, all the two other officers leave. Uh, both Rollins and the officers they don't have to leave and go somewhere else, but rather, I guess, like stay right outside sick bay. Yes, sir. All right. Um, I brought the letter. Um. Officer Jensen, did you want it? Uh, honestly, I, I think it's really the only clue we have at this point. All right. Um, I'll kind of unzip the jacket a little bit and pull it out from the inside pocket, and I will hand it directly to Officer Jensen. Okay. And then I'll step back. So uh, she very carefully breaks the seal. Uh, unfolds the letter and begins reading. And unless any of you are reading it over her, her shoulder, uh, you do not know its contents at the moment. But she she reads, her brow furrows, and she mutters, that, I guess that explains things, but I don't know what to say. Um... Would you mind if I read the letter, Petty Officer? Mm, a, a little bit, Doctor. There's there's some personal stuff in here, but relevant to the situation, um, I think. And she reads a passage aloud, uh, and she says... I know this may seem strange, and if you're reading this, I'm more than likely no longer in your life. However, I have kept something very important from you. Something very important from your father. I am actually what is known as a Dowd, uh, an immortal being of disguises and false surroundings. I fell in love with your father 
uh, a while back and during my travels and we fell in love. Uh, we had you and everything was great. My life had seemed complete, that I was finally fulfilled. But when your father died, it took its toll on me and I apologize for doing so, but I retreated into myself. Uh, I knew I grew distant and Unfortunately, if you're reading this, I must have left you at some point. And if you're reading this, then either you've started manifesting your powers or something else has happened. And I apologize that I'm not here to help you through that. Then Jensen stops reading and says, I, I don't know what to make of this, sir. Do we, when we hear the word Dowd, we've probably never heard it before, correct? Nope, and it doesn't go into the records until the TNG episode, The Survivors. Oh, I, uh, I should have known that you were planning something when you asked about that in the one Discord server. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, we have no record as to what it doubt even is but <sighs> we'll we'll figure something out petty officer uh whatever research we can do we will do and hopefully we can find something that'll help you i i mean I, there's there's more in the letter sir but she makes it sound like the doubter almost gods that would make me half of a god? <laughs> uh, how about we figure things out first to try and help you get better control? Uh, Captain, we're on route to Vulcan, and they have excellent mental discipline training programs. Agreed. I suggest, I suggest we book it. Until we arrive, she's relieved of any duty until further notice. She's basically on vacation. If she can't control her powers, we are not sure what the impact can be, so I I have no problem with her f being free amongst the ship. I just, let's keep her away from sensitive areas. Jensen? Yes, sir. I'm going to give you a model kit. A model kit? Be... You mean those old, like, ships that you build? Yeah. It's, uh... It's going to be a little rocket ship. I was going to work on it myself, but I think, uh... Since you're going to be off duty and we have some time to travel, it'll be good to keep your mind focused on completing it. Something to work on, instead of letting your mind wander. I feel that's best, sir, and this is one of those instances where I wish uh, drinking on duty was allowed. Though I guess the captain did just relieve me, so you got anything strong, Doc? Um, not here, but I can procure some of the finest rising ale if I look around. I think that would be great right about now. Of course. So uh, while they conversate, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and walk out, mm -hmm. let them do their thing, and then when I make it right about here, mm -hmm. the door closes, I'm going to basically say uh, to my security officer, you make note in the log, and that uh, we just need to check in on her occasionally, when somebody, and yes, uh, to coordinate that. Uh, what kind of check? Just checking on her and make sure that uh, she's okay and she's not uh, and she's being uh, treated properly from the rest of the crew. And anything you heard, well, you were outside when she read that letter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I'll just leave it at that. Just and tell him that she won't be on duty until we reach Vulcan. Yes, sir. And then I'll go back to the bridge. Right. But I'll be making nice long notes in my captain's log. 
Alrighty. So, uh, I actually think this is a perfect time to call the session to an end because there's a lot of things uh, that uh, need to be said out of character at this point. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, of course, players, for the third session. It was a wonderful session, I thought. Uh, for those of you watching on Twitch, YouTube, or listening in on Podbean or iTunes, this is where we're signing off. So, we will see you guys later. Bye-bye.